For the past five years, a familiar question has been asked as the English football season draws to its conclusion. Can Pep Guardiola's Manchester City win the Premier League, the FA Cup and the Champions League treble? Well, they've never managed it before, often failing in strange ways and in unlikely areas. But could that change this year? Guardiola and City are currently dueling with Arsenal for the Premier League title, through to the FA Cup semi-finals and in the latter stages of the Champions League. Their chances of success in each of these competitions are high. Arsenal currently lead the Premier League but have played a game more than City and are yet to visit the Etihad Stadium. In the FA Cup, they will face championship side Sheffield United in their semi-final, then one of Brighton or Manchester United if they progress through to the final. In the Champions League, they're currently engaged in a tie with Bayern Munich, but they would appear to comfortably be the best side left in the competition. And yet this rationale itself is familiar. Every season since 2017-18, the same could be said. And yet City have always produced a stumble. So what's different this time? Well, there are perhaps a few factors. In the FA Cup, City's draw is clearly favourable. They've been drawn against an easier semi-final opponent and would be considered favourites against Manchester United or Brighton were they to progress. In the Premier League, City not only host the decisive games between the two sides, but also have the easier run-in. According to Soccer Power Index rankings published by 538, which are calculated according to the relative strength of opponents, City have the fifth easiest run-in, whereas Arsenal have the eighth hardest. City's season has also occurred under less scrutiny which seems beneficial now that the end is here. Arsenal have enjoyed as much as an eight-point lead in the Premier League, and at various points it's appeared to be their title to lose, with City's interest lying in other competitions. Arsenal haven't won the Premier League in almost 20 years, so their performances have been scrutinised to a far greater extent. By contrast, City have avoided much of the energy-sapping pressure that characterised their recent rivalry with Liverpool. It's not unreasonable to conclude that the nature of that rivalry drained plenty of emotional energy away from City's European pursuits and has helped in part to derail the quest for that elusive treble. It's a small matter, but it's not insignificant. During those years, City and Liverpool demanded an unprecedented level of excellence from one another. Arsenal haven't yet reached that stage, nor has the relationship between the two fan bases deteriorated to the same point. And another factor in City's favour is, obviously, Erling Haaland. By the second week of April, Haaland had already scored 30 goals in the Premier League, and the Norwegian is on course to be the first City player to win a golden boot under Guardiola. Now, the availability of a volume goalscorer of Haaland's standard is a rare luxury, and one which, even with Sergio Aguero, City have rarely had. The most all-competition goals Aguero ever scored for the club was 33 back in 2016-17. Already, with maybe another 15 games left to play, Haaland has scored 42 times. He provides an astonishing level of efficiency that City have really needed in the Champions League. Across the five-year span in question, Manchester City's European history looks superficially at least like a hard luck tale. And while they have been unfortunate, there are two themes that bind all of those games. Wastefulness, and City's failure to exert true attacking pressure commensurate with their talent. In 2018, they were beaten by Klopp's Liverpool. City lost 3-0 without registering a shot on target in the first leg. Aguero was injured, and without him, City enjoyed 66% possession, produced 27 crosses, and enjoyed plenty of midfield control, but didn't hit the target with a single shot. Fast forward a year to a quarter-final against Tottenham. City would lose on away goals, and in the decisive second leg they would concede three times to Spurs, despite their opponents amassing an XG rating of just 0.8 on the night. They were on the wrong side of VAR in that game, but missed a penalty in the first leg, had numerous other chances to score an away goal, and might have scored many more than four in the second game. Twelve months later, they were a beaten finalist, losing 1-0 to Chelsea. There were elements of misfortune, but City managed a single shot on target in a game where Guardiola began with a false nine, shifted Kevin De Bruyne's position and started without either Rodri or Fernandinho. If Erling Haaland has a strength beyond his goals, then it's in the clarity that he provides. His virtues are so obvious and inarguable that they leave little room for that kind of experimentation, even for Guardiola. One year on, in the semi-final second leg against Real Madrid, City conceded twice in 90 seconds to lose a 5-3 lead, and would then lose the game in extra time. 
It was a freak occurrence, but it was one that City should have survived, having underperformed their XG of 1.93 that night and missed a host of chances in the first leg. Now, single game XG is often misleading, yes. But across those two games, City, without a feature forward in the Lewandowski, Messi, Ronaldo or Benzema class, were clearly poorer for that one floor. Haaland's efficiency in front of goal should better protect City if further bad luck is lurking this season. His role is so well defined that it's unlikely that he'll ever be moved aside to make room for a false nine, as in 2020, nor is Guardiola liable to interfere with his hugely profitable understanding with Kevin De Bruyne. Now, of course, none of this amounts to a guarantee, and yet with this more obvious strength, there seem to be fewer things which can go wrong for Manchester City in 2023. It's a strange virtue, but one which might see them finally capture the treble. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.